Welcome to the Equip Disciple channel. My name is Rick McClatchy. I will be your host. We are here to be and to make disciples of Jesus. And we do that through uh, daily devos, through Sunday sermons, and through other discipleship resources. We are here to equip you to be an equipped disciple. All right. Welcome into another day of your daily devo. I'm Pastor Rick, and we are jumping in to our next section of John chapter 15. Hopefully, you had an opportunity to check out yesterday's. Um, yesterday's was uh, John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8, uh, talking about Jesus as the true vine, and just such good reminder, just just good stuff all around. Um, so if you have an opportunity, go check that out. Um, it'll It'll be good for you, I think. Um, and so today, uh, we are going to jump into the next section of John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. And we're going to talk primarily about two big concepts, obeying Jesus and loving one another. And actually, loving one another is obeying Jesus. So there's a win-win there. And um, a little shout out to my friend Bruce, who uh, gave me this hat. I've worn it before on one of the videos, but it's been a minute. So I just thought I'd bring, bring Rural King back, you know. I think Bruce got me this hat because I find the word rural to be a hard word to say. I don't know what it is about two R's and a U in between them that is just tough. Um, so uh, shout out to you, Bruce. Appreciate you uh, being a regular video watcher. It's nice of you. Um, so here we go. We're going to jump right in. Like, comment, subscribe would be awesome. Share it with a friend. It's all all good stuff. So... Verse 9, as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Remain in my love. And again, this word remain is the same as it was in yesterday when we were talking about the, um, you know, remain in me and let my words remain in you. And that word remain is just like live, set up camp, y'all. Like, like make that your place of dwelling, your that's where you hang. That's where you're at. So make your place of residence in his love. And let's not rush too quickly past this verse. As the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Man, have you thought about the Trinity and the perfect, unending, unbelievable, totally complete love? that they have for one another that the father has for the son and, and the father has for the Holy spirit. And just because God is love that everything he's got going on inside the Trinity is perfect, perfect, perfect love. And so it just kind of struck me like we could so easily just read right by that and be like, yeah, yeah, God loves us. Yay. But as the father has loved me, I have also loved you like that complete overflowing um, indescribable really kind of love if if you keep my commands you will remain in my love just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love so it seems that obedience is tied to remaining in his love and you know so some people get really I don't know I don't know if defensive is the right word, but like they get kind of aggressive about how, oh, so God's love has conditions on it. And I mean, in some senses, in some senses, it's kind of true, you know, to say that um, to say that God's love is unconditional can give you the wrong impression because God wants us to repent. He wants us to grow in holiness and righteousness and develop our character. He wants us to be whole again, like to come back from the ways that the curse of sin has decimated our lives. And that requires us to surrender to him and follow his lead. And so if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. And that is because God's commands are perfect, restoring the soul. And so this is where we think about, you know, having to obey someone in the messed up, broken human context, because no human being 
is perfect. No human being is totally good. No human being um, has totally the other person's good in mind. There's always this conflict of interest going on because the other person doesn't control everything, doesn't have omnipotence, doesn't have omniscience, doesn't, you know, like there's a lot of things that God is not limited by that normal human relationships are totally limited by. And sometimes we compare these commands, um, these statements to and we compare it to as if a human being was telling us this like hey well if you keep all of my commands you'll remain in my love well god's love you know we he's like hey it's like if he had um well he just used the the sheep gate you know like hey come on in through the door and hang out in the sheep pen and it's like the sheep pen is is like remaining in his love, like living in that area, right? It's choosing to be under his domain. And being under his domain then requires that we do as he says, because those are the rules of that vicinity. Otherwise, otherwise we're going to, we're going to boot you out, you know, and not like, again, not like if you make one mistake, it's, it's the orientation of your heart towards the Lord that you want to do what he says. There's all kinds of grace and mercy, and he's compassionate and slow to anger and abounding in love. So, so sometimes people trip over these verses be, because it sounds like there's these humongous conditions on the love of God. And it's not, you know, not maybe what I was once told, but no, it's, man, if you get even just the slightest revelation of who God is, how good he is, how incredible his love is, then, then doing what he says is like natural outflow because he's that good. He's so good. And I think that as you follow it up with the next verse, I've told you these things so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete He's saying, I'm telling you to keep my commands because when you keep my commands, my joy fills you. There's this joy that comes from obedience and it fills you so that your joy may be complete. And I don't even know if you're ready for that. I don't even know if you're ready for the completion of your love like I provide. Like that's what God's saying. Like, And that's where God's total desire for you is for your best. And that's where Adam and Eve got off track in the garden. He had the perfect environment, the perfect situation, like all of the awesomeness of gardening without any weeds. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. Like I would be a gardening fool if there were no weeds. I'd be planting stuff all over the place. Like, yeah, let's grow stuff because I wouldn't have to go try to figure out how to kill weeds without, you know, giving myself cancer because of some crazy weed. You know, I don't know. It would just be so awesome, you know, and it would just be like, God's so good. This this apple, you know, this tomato, this potato, this whatever, like uh, potato, my my bad. I, you know, tomato, tomato, whatever. And so, um, so they're in the garden and they're gardening and this stinking serpent comes up, right? And starts chit-chatting with them about life and starts going, you know what, uh, does, does he really love you? Does he really have your best in mind? Starts getting him to question the character of God. And that's the thing that really starts to blow him up because they start questioning God's intentions. And so then they don't want to do what he says because they start thinking that he's got some kind of dastardly plan going on. So if we can push all that stuff away and remind ourselves that he is good and he does good, Lord, teach me your ways. Like, Help me to know you, God. And then we do it. We do what he says. And it causes us to be able to stay constantly in his love. And our joy is made complete and filled up totally. Man, come on. Remaining in his love, living there equals our joy being complete. So just remain in his love. Live there because that's the place where there's restoration. There is healing. There is joy. Man, that's the place we want to be because the 
being in the center of what God has for you is, is the best place to be because God's plans for you are flourishing and, and wholeness and, um, and spiritual health. And man, I'm telling you what, this is my command. So, okay, Rick, we're supposed to keep his commands. What kinds of commands does he have? That's a great question. Basically boiling it all down. There's just two. There's just two. One is to love the Lord, your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. And number two, love your neighbor. And this is kind of a third one, kind of, sort of. Love one another as I have loved you. Mm. You ready for that? Are you ready for that? Loving one another as I have loved you. That's an intense bar, y'all. That's an intense bar. Again, we accomplish it by the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's not, we're not left alone to try to accomplish these things. But I mean, those are the kinds of things that God is commanding us to do. So just keep his commands. It's not crazy junk that's going to, you know, be torturous or whatever. No, it's, it's actually be how I've created you to be. God created us to be a particular way and sin messed that up. And he's asking us to walk back into our original design. And that's the coolest thing about God. Man, God is so good. This is my command. Love one another as I have loved you. And he gave his life up for us. And he sacrificed all. Even though he was not the one that had done any wrong, he's the one that laid his life down. I think that's such a huge message for us. <clears throat> there are so many times where... You just need to kind of get over yourself. You need to humble yourself and you need to you need to be willing to kind of take the hit in a situation for the sake of loving another person and um, making a way and just now again, there are plenty of situations where you got to have healthy boundaries and all that kind of stuff. So please don't, you know, turn what I'm saying into something that I'm not saying. But man, if we could get a grasp of loving one another as I have loved you. What a what a great love. And again, um, we we want to understand that God's love is perfect. And and so God's not saying go love people that just continue to spit in your face, you know, like I mean he does say love your enemies and pray for them and all that kind of stuff, yes. But this loving and serving kind of love, you know, laying your life down, there's some level of response that that Jesus asks for in, in the relationship. Right. And so it's okay for us to be looking for our people responding, our people responding to the love that I'm offering. No one has greater love than this to lay down his life for his friends. No one has greater love than this to lay his life, lay down his life for his friends. So Jesus is kind of giving a little bit of a, a little bit of a prophetic utterance there and also then declaring to them how they're probably going to need to do the same thing. You are my friends if you do what I command you. You're my friends if you do what I command you. So we looked throughout the course of the Bible, only two people were really ever, you could maybe kind of throw Enoch in there potentially because he walked with God and, you know, like that statement, you could turn that into like, they were probably friends, you know, like that, that makes sense. So we could add a third person in there, but basically Abraham and Moses and really Moses just by implication, not even by uh, direct, you know, but I mean, it says that he spoke to God face to face, you know, as a man does to a friend and um, Abraham was li literally called friend of God. And so, but now the door has been opened up to other people to come into that type of relationship. And it's you and me. And, and all we have to do is all we have to do. You're my friends. If you do what I command you, all we have to do is follow his commands. And we're invited into this world of friendship with God, where he tells us what he's up to. You know, I mean, it's like, it's like prophetic gifting almost kind of flows again out of, a life of dedicated obedience, because as you do what God says, as you obey his commands, you, you kind of increase the level of friendship. You increase the level of friendship. You begin to know more and more what God is up to because he tells his friends what he's doing. 
because a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have made no made known to you everything I have heard from my father. I do not call you servants anymore. A servant doesn't know what it is. So the action, you know, that is still fairly the same. Like we're still doing what God says, but we get to come into a fuller understanding of what God's doing and not just blindly following, but him, him sharing his heart with us. And verse 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce fruit and that your fruit should remain so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give you. This is what I command you. Love one another. Love one another. Man, take that away from today for sure. Love one another. Man, ask yourself the question. Before you do anything, before you respond to somebody, how do I be loving towards this person? Love is love is patient. Love is kind. It keeps no record of wrongs. It believes the best, hopes the best, you know, rejoices in the truth and doesn't keep any record of wrongs. And like, okay, wow. All right. Am I, am I doing those things towards this person? Am I loving one another? He's called us friends. We should kind of like really meditate on that concept a little bit today. I think it's good for us to like kind of really understand the depth of God's love for us and how personal God's love for us it is is it's not just like the God of the universe loves you and has a plan, you know. And I don't mean to like mock it, but but this like this big grandiose picture and idea. But really it's like the God of the universe knows your name. God of the universe knows your name and he wants to walk with you. He wants to know you. He wants to fellowship with you. What? Like, can you believe that? So man, schedule some time today to talk to him, schedule some time to just, you know, metaphorically speaking, look him in, look him in the face and just say, Hey, I'm here and I want to know you. I want to walk with you. And and as he begins to tell you things and as he begins to put things on your heart that need to be done, it's not going to be hard. It's not going to be hard to keep his commands because one, he works in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. So the, the will, the desire and the ability comes from him anyways, but you're going to find the things that he's telling you to do are wonderful things that bring life and encouragement and strength to other people. He's called us friends. He's good, loving with a perfect love. And this is where um, where trusting him and obeying him is when we couch that concept inside the concept of his goodness, then it, then it all makes sense because it's a safe place for us to be to uh, to obey someone who every bit of them is good. Amen. So he is good and he loves with a perfect love and he chose you. And that's just going back to the verse there. Like if like you did not choose me, but I chose you, he tells the disciples. And that was very counter countercultural to their standard in the day in their standard. They people would pick a rabbi to follow. And they'd go follow him and they kind of hope that they end up getting kind of selected for the inner circle, you know, um, and that it would work out well for them. But that's not how it happened with Jesus. Jesus went and found them, chose them, said, hey, f- come follow me, invited them in and they responded. And there's something powerful about that. And then he, he says, not only did I choose you, but I appointed you. What did he appoint them to? I appointed you to go and produce fruit that your fruit should remain. He appointed you to produce much fruit. So you're don't tell yourself that lie that like other people are meant to be fruitful, but I don't know. I missed the boat or I'm not good enough or whatever, whatever lie you might have been believing, you know, about yourself. It's fruit that's going to remain. And that's why obedience is so crucial because if we are left to ourselves, our devices, our plans, guess what's not going to happen? The fruit's not going to remain because we're going to fall into some trap and we're going to waste our time on some things and we're going to do things in kind of not the best way. But if we keep his commands, 
follow his plan, follow his design. Then, then we're going to, we're going to produce fruit naturally because we're just hanging, hanging in the love of Jesus, right? We're residing, we're remaining in his love. And then the work that we're doing is going to be good. It's going to be the right thing and it's going to produce fruit naturally. And that fruit is going to be good, healthy, strong fruit. That's going to remain. That's why obedience is so crucial. So we need a, I don't know, and this might not even be you, but I know you know someone that kind of freaks out about that word obedience and it being tied in with God's love. It's a natural, like, I don't know, kind of like almost symbiotic relationship kind of thing where um, they're, they're connected. You can't, you can't pull them apart and you can't even really like put an order to it. We know for certain that we love God because why? Because he first loved us. So we know that God's love comes first, that it's, we're not earning anything here, folks. We are responding to the amazing love of God. And the best thing we could do is to respond by obeying him, by doing what he says, because he's the smartest person, the smartest anything ever, like any problem you can have, he knows the right answer. Anything like you're worried about something in the past. He knows the answer. You're worried about something in your present. He knows the answer. You're worried about something in the future that you can't control. He has the answer. He knows all things. So of course, if you encountered somebody that says, Hey, I know you're locked up in a prison and you owe tons of money. I want to, I want to free you from this prison and I want to um, cancel all of your debt. I want to pay it all off. And, um, and then I just have some plans I'd like you to do. And I want you to go love some people. I want you to go bless some people. I want you to go strengthen some people. I want, I mean, what, what kind of person would turn down that offer? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I want to give you all the freedom in the world. And then I'm just going to give you guidelines. I'm going to give you guidelines and how to best live out that freedom. Because I know if I left you to your own devices and I didn't tell you what to do, you would wreck yourself. So actually my commands are to bring you life. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. Do you want your soul revived? Then obey. Then do what he says. Follow the law of the Lord. You know, obey. Love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Love one another as Jesus has loved you. It's so simple and yet will keep us busy the rest of our lives. But when we obey, we remain in his love. right here if you keep if you keep my commands you'll remain in my love just i've just as i have kept my father's commands and remain in his love then your joy will be full and complete come on now hope you're encouraged god bless you today have a great day and i'll talk to you tomorrow